most people don't appreciate what they have outside of New York City as far as like, you know, most most Americans grow up with the white picket fence kind of situation, like backyard. I'm like, I didn't have a backyard until I was 30 years old. Right. I'm 35. Wait, so where exactly did you grow up? I, I grew up in Jackson Heights, Queens. Okay. In literally the hood in Queens. So uh-huh. it's it's like, I grew up in an apartment, uh, never had a backyard. I didn't know it was to have a backyard until I was 30 years old. Right. So people don't appreciate that in the rest of America. I'm like, oh, I hate my house. I'm like, dude, you had a backyard. Shut the f*** up. Right. <laughs> it's but like, would you say like net... You're still thankful to have grown up as a New Yorker, like with the life skills that it taught you valuable enough to offset that? hundred percent. You grew up here, you run with wolves from, you know, birth, you know, like everything is a show, right? Uh Like, I mean, it's a, it's a constant grind and hustle in this city. So it's like, you you can't teach people what you learned growing up here. Right. You can't. What are the formative experiences you, you went through in your childhood that created the George Santos that we see today? Dude, it, lots of pain. Mm. You know, parents getting divorced, mom with two kids trying to make it, having financial difficulties. That that was never fun, right? Mm. But that builds resilience. Like at the age of fourteen, I was like getting papers from school so I can go work to help my mom out with rent and whatnot. You know, mm. so it's like that builds you stronger to just like get, and then you just want to continue to like break the system. I hate the system. Mm. I, it's like. People like to say all the time, oh, George Santos beat the man. You're damn right I beat the man because f*** the man because the man runs our lives into the ground at all times. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like kind of that attitude that like, you know, like that put me into the places I, I aspire to go into and ended, ended up in Congress. So. Right. I mean, like some people have been quoted as saying basically that like your real story is so inspirational and such a good story for a politician to kind of base their image around that it's almost kind of baffling that you've had so many uh, you know issues with kind of like fudging the truth if you knew what long island politics was like uh-huh. if i walked in there and told you know the chairman over there of the republican party like hey i'm a poor kid uh you know told him my story he wouldn't take two looks at me. Really? Just look at everybody that he does put into to office and people that they do. So there was a stupid decision. Biggest regret of my life is to listen to consultants and to people and say, fudge it a little bit. It's just for this meeting or else you won't get the meeting. Uh-huh. And then that, you know, once you tell a lie, you either run with it or you just tell, say it and never say it again. But when you say it in, in this form, format it creates a consequence of it gets repeated right the chairman like oh he's so accomplished i'm like oh fuck, i gotta keep going on with this, this really stinks. so do you feel like a ability to speak about what the last couple of years of your life has been like that you maybe didn't necessarily have the freedom to speak on previously i still don't have the freedom to speak on what's right? holding you back well i'm still going through a massive trial uh right. in, in the eastern district of new york so it's like it's it's like having your voice taken away from you in the most profound sense where you can't even really articulate yourself without being misinterpreted and, mm. and like, oh, we're going to throw the book at you because, you know, like, so everything I say is is taken out of either context or people use it against me in the most bizarre way. It's like, I do nothing good in the eyes of some folks here. You know, I'm like a, the worst part of humanity. So, I mean, the, like, the, there's a lot of different types of liars. There's like liars who kind of like will lie when it's just useful to them to get out of a particular scenario. And then there's people who are like pathological liars where like we've all known people like this in our life who like they really just have no connection to the truth and they're kind of constantly using this uh, technique to like get out of situations. Like from your perspective, it's more like this was just sort of like a, an accidental piling on of, of lies, like from some innocent white lies in the beginning. I'll put it this way. Before I got elected to Congress, my reputation in New York was blunt. He'll tell you the truth to your face, even if it it's like the worst thing on earth. It's, you know, like that classic question, do I look fat in this dress from a girl? I'm like, yes, you look obese. You were that guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm still that guy, okay. right? The problem is, is that people don't know that, right? So uh, that was my reputation prior to getting elected and then everybody's saying like oh he's a pathological i'm not a pathological liar Uh i will tell you the truth to your face even if it even if it ends up me getting punched in the face but at least i said what i said right i meant it when i said it and i said it when i said it Uh and people look at me like what so that's kind of like the george santos that people 
don't understand mm. who really George Santos is because they just want to build on this narrative. I think most people in the public eye that have ev ever gone down a rabbit hole of allegations against them can relate because once the media takes a hold, a foothold of some b against you, you can't control that. Mm. It's like the complete full force of the mainstream media coming down on you. And guess what? Most people would have caved and put their tail in between their legs, resigned and went under a rock. Mm. I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to let no people, you know, these elitist white privileged people in the media put me down at, and build their careers at my expense. Mm.